It won't fit. Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. It's so dark in here. King of the sky will shine his ray.
to something. Aha! That's it! Lewis, are you in there? I'll be right there. He's hiding something in his briefcase. What the? What are you doing in there? What happened? Um, I got caught snooping around, and Rose asked me to leave. Oh no! Now you won't be able to solve the mystery. Better luck next time, I guess. That's too bad. And to think you could have saved the day. And helped out Rose. I know, I know. If only I had another chance. I'd be a lot more careful the next time around. What's that? They're dead roses in the parlor. Are they dead again? For some reason, they seem to die right after I buy them. It's strange. I've never seen that happen before. It must be the weather or something. Do you know why there's a speaker in the air vent? Oh, Abby told me she's rigging up some kind of PA system in here. To tell you the truth, I really can't stand elevator music. Do you know what gumbo foo means? No. Not that I can remember. I can see you're busy. I'll let you go. So long. Hey, Nancy, I see you survived Abby's seance. Man, that Veldez guy sure sounded creepy. I guess. Were you down here then? I don't remember seeing you. Rose told me all about it. So how are things coming along? Anything I can help you out with? How do you like working for Abby? She's not bad. She can be a little weird. I think she gets on Rose's nerves sometimes. What do you mean? She always does a disappearing act whenever Rose needs her to do some work. And I think Rose is sort of hatty, you know? Abby thinks the house is haunted. Do you? I'm not sure. 
Let's just say I wouldn't rule it out. But that's Abby's department, not mine. Charlie, I found this diskette. I think it's yours. I was wondering where it was. Thanks a lot, Nancy. Luckily, I had a backup at the school. That must be an interesting paper you're writing. I just started to write it, so I don't know very much about the robbery. It's hard to separate fact from fiction, especially when most of the information is based on rumors. Whatever happened to the gold? Nobody knows. Some historians say that the bank faked the robbery to collect the insurance money. Was it El Diablo who stole the gold? Or someone else? It was definitely El Diablo, but no one knows who he was. In my opinion, El Diablo never existed. He was a composite of different outlaws from that era. Have you seen the poem in the Chinese room? Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. It almost sounds like there's a hidden message in there, you know? Had you come across any hidden passageways down here? You mean like a trap door leading to a room with skeletons or something? No, I haven't. I'll let you get back to your renovation. So long. I hope you're convinced now that the spirits are with us. These ghosts are here to stay. I'm convinced that this house is haunted. I'm just not sure who is responsible. Isn't it obvious? Senor Valdez and his wife, long lost soulmates wandering aimlessly in the netherworld, returning to this house to search for each other. Ah. <sighs> I only hope that one day, I will be able to reunite them so that they may find peace. I found out how you rigged the seance table with a projector. <laughs> that was a pretty good show you gave. Okay, so I staged part of the seance. But that still doesn't mean this place isn't haunted. Seances were very popular during the Victorian era, and I plan to entertain our guests with them. It'll be a great way to promote the place. Have you been creating these accidents to help your promotion? Of course not! I've had nothing to do with these accidents. They cost us both time and money. If you want to find out who's behind the accidents, ask our resident handyman. Do you mean Charlie? Ugh, it's clear to me that Charlie's totally responsible for the accidents. Who else could it have been? He's a really nice kid, but he has no idea what he's doing. Unfortunately, Rose doesn't want to fire him. And there's something suspicious about him. What do you mean? The other day, I was down in the basement working for over an hour, and suddenly he sneaks up on me. I bet he was down there the whole time, watching me. Have you seen the poem in my room? Oh, I love that poem. Listen, my child, to this story of dreams. How does the rest go? It was there when we bought the place. Do you know much about Lewis? It must be great having your own expert on Victorians. He owns Chandler Interiors, a very reputable antique store. I'm sure his clients will be quite interested in our bed and breakfast once they hear about our resident ghost. How long have you known Rose? A couple of years. She has good business sense, but I think she needs to think more about advertising. Otherwise, we're just like all the other B&Bs in this town, and believe me, there's plenty of them. I saw those papers in the parlor. Where did you find them? Right in my room. They're so vintage. I'm going to ask Lewis if he can get me some antique frames for them. Rose and I can use the letters in our historical display. Was there anything about the house in them? I don't think so. I really didn't go through them that much. I did find this old picture of a woman dressed in men's clothing. I think it was taken in the entryway by the staircase. I sent it to a photographer to have it restored. Do you have any idea who this woman might be? No, I don't. Sorry. I heard someone crying in the hallway. Was that you? I told you the spirits were interested in you. Was it a woman crying? Do you think it was a ghost? Well, it wasn't me crying out there. Does Charlie live around here? I'm not sure. He said he's between apartments. I think he said he's staying with friends until he can find a place of his own. 
Between apartments? That seems kind of odd. Not for San Francisco. Rents are really high, and there are so many kids thinking they can find cheap housing out here. It's sad to say, but a lot of them end up on the streets. Did the house come with a lot of furniture? There were a lot of pieces and knickknacks left behind, like the books in the study, your bed. I think it was too large to take out of the room. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Pox Fobiscum. Drew Residence, Hannah Groon speaking. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Nancy. Abby is very strange. She really is convinced there's a ghost somewhere in the house. I don't know Abby very well, but I never felt comfortable with her. I can't put my finger on it, but she just seemed, well, I don't know, like she wasn't who she really was, like she was putting on an act. What do you mean? I could never get a straight answer out of her. She was always pretending to be someone she obviously wasn't. I don't think she did it to be rude. She was probably just practicing for some part. I met Rose's handyman, Charlie. He seems nice. Rose told me he's a fine young fellow, but a little rough around the edges. I believe she said he's studying history at a community college. Has Rose said anything about him and the accidents? Nothing particular. I know she's concerned that Charlie may have inadvertently caused some of them, but she doesn't think it was intentional. Did you know Rose has a resident expert on Victorians? Oh yes, Rose has mentioned Lewis several times. She's really fond of him and is very grateful for his help. Oh? Is there more between them than what I'm seeing? Oh no, they're not dating or anything, but I can tell Rose likes him very much. Have you heard about the seance Abby hosted for Rose and me? Seance? Good heavens. Has Rose ever mentioned someone by the name of Valdez? No, she never mentioned the name. Abby faked the seance. She rigged a table with a projector. Well, you didn't think it was for real, did you? Don't worry, Rose, about this. She has enough on her mind already. I just can't imagine why Abby would go to all that trouble. This house is full of surprises. I found a secret room in the basement where someone's been living. Strange accidents? Secret rooms? Seances? The more I hear about this house, the more I wonder what Rose has gotten herself into. I just found a hidden attic. I wonder if it has anything to do with all these accidents. Hmm, perhaps it does. Nancy, keep this a secret until you get to the bottom of these strange events. Don't even tell Rose. The less everyone knows, the more you can investigate without creating suspicion. Lewis is up to something. I saw him take a book from the library. That doesn't sound very suspicious. What was the book about? Lewis's book mentioned that this house was once called Gumbo Fu in the 1800s. That's nice, dear. I have no idea what that means. But give Emily a call. She knows all about San Francisco legends. I should get back to work. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Jess. And George. Hello, you two. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Listen to this. I found a secret attic and an old desk. It looks like no one's been in there for years. There's probably a lot of clues about the house in there. Oh, what was in the desk? An old playbill for a musical called The Bandit's Treasure. The Bandit's Treasure? Maybe there is treasure in the house. I found some letters written by E. Valdez. I guess he was the owner of a hotel named the Golden Gardenia. Valdez! Golden Gardenias? I thought they were all white. That's it! Don't you see? The hotel has gold hidden in it, and Valdez is watching over it. I don't think so, Bess. Abby hosted a seance and contacted the spirit who's haunting the house. Did you actually see the ghost? Yeah, right. I'm sure it was some kind of trick. Abby sounds suspicious. Yeah, maybe she's hiding something. She probably knows more about the house than she's admitting. I found a secret room in the basement, and it looks like someone is living there. Who could it be? Probably Charlie. Doesn't he spend most of his time down there? Look around for clues. Who knows what he's up to? Do either of you know what gumbo fu means? It sounds Chinese. Call Emily. She'll know. I should get going. Talk to you later. See ya. Bye. Emily Foxworth speaking. Hello. It's Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. How's your case coming along? What do you know about the Bandit's Treasure? Bandit's Treasure? Oh, you mean the play! The rep did a season where they performed old local plays, including the Bandit's Treasure. I've never seen it, but I hear the music is fantastic. Do you know what the words gumbo fu mean? Hmm, sounds Chinese to me. Why don't you ask everyone what they think it means? It may have something to do with the house. In the meantime, I'll ask my friends about it. Gumbo Fu. Do you know where Yerba Buena Town is? That's what San Francisco was called back during the Spanish colonial period, but no one calls it that anymore. Tell me about the Spanish and San Francisco. Oh, you could write a book on that. The Spanish were the first Europeans to settle this area during the 1700s, and it stayed that way until after the Mexican-American War when it was handed over to the United States. It couldn't have happened at a better time because gold was discovered outside the city not more than two years later. <laughs> With all of that gold around, I'd imagine there's a lot of buried treasure in this town. Yeah, you'd think that, but I've never heard of any in San Francisco, except for Treasure Island out in the bay. But that's named after the book, not some legend. I should get going. Goodbye, Emily. Keep me posted, okay? Nancy. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Gumbo foo? I love gumbo. What kind of gumbo is gumbo foo? Uh, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. See you later.
It's locked. There's something hidden here. Hello, Nancy. I was wondering whether you knew anything about someone named E. Valdez. E. Valdez. No, I've never heard of that name. But I'll jot it down and let you know if I come across it anywhere. Have you ever heard of the Great Christmas Gold Robbery? Of course, although it never actually occurred. Fictional history, a folk legend, a complete myth. But nonetheless, it's still a fascinating story, even though it isn't true. What kind of antique store do you own? It's a gallery, not a store. And it's called Chandler Interiors, specializing in the Victorian period. I have clients from all over the world, and if I don't have what they're looking for, I find it. Was this house once a hotel? That's hard to say. The house has been renovated many times, but several of its original features, such as the saloon and staircase, seem to indicate that it may have been a hotel. Unfortunately, there are no records on this house before 1906. Do you know who Lizzie Applegate was? Yes, I certainly do. She was a very popular actress in the late 1800s. She was very generous and left all of her money to the Ladies' Protection Society. What was the Ladies' Protection Society? A popular charity in the early 1900s. They helped widows and orphans. Have you seen the poem in my room? Oh, that one. Yes, it's just some cheap Chinatown souvenir. Do you know what a phoenix is? Yes, it's a mythical bird-like creature that builds a nest every 500 years and then sets itself on fire to rise forth reborn from its ashes. It's a very popular symbol in the Bay Area. In fact, there's one on the main staircase. Do you think Charlie is doing a good job? Certainly. He's rough around the edges, but he's reliable and learns very quickly. He's just what Rose and I need. Did Lizzie ever wear men's clothing? <laughs> I'm sure she played some roles where she had to dress as a man, but she was quite an elegant woman, quite fashionable for her time. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Where did you hear that? 
I came across it in a book. No doubt the book I have locked in my briefcase. I thought someone had been in there. I think I'll need to have a word with Rose about this. Nancy, I'm ashamed of you. Everyone in this house expects some degree of privacy and you have obviously violated that trust. Your behavior is completely unacceptable. No arguments. I cannot stand to have someone so inconsiderate in my house. I've arranged for Abby to drop you off at the airport. I'm sorry it has to work out this way. Goodbye. Did Lizzie ever wear men's clothing? <laughs> I'm sure she played some roles where she had to dress as a man, but she was quite an elegant woman, quite fashionable for her time. Do you know what gumbo foo means? Where did you hear that? I read about it in a magazine. I see. As I recall, it means house of great books. After the great earthquake, many books and documents were stored in private homes to save them from the fires. The Chinese called those houses gumbo fu. I won't keep you any longer. Nice to see you again. Who has called me forth from the great beyond? Nancy? Get out of my room! Rose! Rose! Nancy, I'm ashamed of you. Everyone in this house expects some degree of privacy and you have obviously violated that trust. Your behavior is completely unacceptable. No arguments. I cannot stand to have someone so inconsiderate in my house. I've arranged for Abby to drop you off at the airport. I'm sorry it has to work out this way. Goodbye.
I should return the spider so Abby doesn't suspect anything. the house to make it haunted. The only ghost who walks these halls is you, Abby. And so it is, I admit it. But I had you fooled there, didn't I? If I can fool Nancy Drew, I'm sure I'll be able to fool even our most skeptical guests. Why did you go to all the trouble to do this? For the publicity. But I really do think there's something going on in this house. I really believe it's haunted. I'm just... Enhancing the spectral experience. Are you sure you haven't caused any of these accidents with your stunts? Yes, I'm sure. I've been very careful with everything. Uh, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. See you later. <laughs> 